Joining me to talk about all this is our friend, Alaska Governor Mike Dunleavy. Mike, welcome back Great to, to the here. set. Great to be here, Larry. Uh, we got a bunch of things here on the docket. Um, first one up in Alaska, the whole willow yes. business. Now, this is a big reservoir, and it should be developed. Yes. And first they said yes, then they said, you tell me, because I smell, I don't know, I should, let me just say, with all due respect, Interior Secretary Deb Haaland, I think, is still throwing a monkey wrench into this. But tell me what you know on site in Alaska. Well, I, I agree with you, and it's uh, it's the environmentalists, it's the extreme environmentalists. So this has been a, a play that's been in process probably since the 1990s, but 90s as far as leases go. This play, if, if allowed to go forward, would be about 180 to 200 thousand barrels of oil. That's significant for the country. That's significant for Alaska. Uh, and this is a conventional play. That oil would go into the pipeline where the, uh, we have 500,000 barrels going through that pipeline right now. That's 200,000 barrels. Right now, they're down to uh, making the decision whether it's going to be two pads or three or more. If it's two pads, it may not be uh, feasible for ConocoPhillips to invest in that particular play, which would be uh, a terrible thing for Alaska, a terrible thing for the people of, uh, of this country. And so... We'll know here, our understanding is in just in a few days, uh, if not sooner, whether that is going to get the go-ahead or not. A pad is what? That's where you put your oil rig on top to uh, drill through and ah. pump the oil out of, yes. But Willow is a pretty big reservoir itself, About is it About 700,000 barrels, 700 million barrels. I mean, it would have, I mean, this may be stated in the obvious, but if you got it, if you got the permitting and so forth, and you actually drilled and you actually produced, it would have a beneficial effect on lower prices. Huge, yeah, huge. And gasoline prices huge. included without further depleting the strategic petroleum reserve as a cheap political trick. Absolutely. And if it's not approved, this could be a precedence for other uh, uh, um, federal, uh, federal, federal drilling uh, place that uh, could be hampered. You got any idea when a decision will finally be made? Because they've been back and forth on this. My understanding is sometimes, uh, sometime this week, uh, uh, within the next few days. This week? Yes, that's what Not I've even heard. next week, this week. That's what I've heard, yes. Have you talked to Deborah Holland, Interior uh, Secretary? No, I saw her about a year and a half ago. Up in well, you're the governor year. of the home state here. There's not a lot of communication between uh, that administration and us, unfortunately. When uh, President Trump was there, we met nine separate times with the president. Know, right? yeah, that's lots. how I met you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But... Uh, uh, these folks really don't want to talk to us in Alaska. They want to lock Alaska up, make it a park, and uh, this, is, uh, this is unfortunate. Let me show you a chart. This is so interesting. Uh, I don't know where the heck I saw this chart. It might have been in uh, the... Um, it, was it the Committee to Unleash Prosperity's chart? Uh, just check this out. Car emissions have been crashing for 50 years, mm -hmm. even while car miles traveled have been going up. Look at that. It should be up on the full screen. I mean, pra car emissions are practically zero, and yet the Biden whole Biden approach, and you see this with our friend Gavin Newsom in California and some of the other West Coast states, not yours, but um, no more gas-powered automobiles. Got to all be electric. Uh, I don't, you want an electric vehicle? Fine. I'm all for it, but you should be able to choose, right? Exactly. Look, but look at that chart. That chart, car emissions have been crashing, yes. and they're picking on them. Yeah. So it's not only an issue of uh, oil in Alaska, it's also an uh, issue of minerals. If you want to go to a green economy, Larry, you've got to have the minerals. Mm -hmm. Yet, as they are, at the same time that they're blocking our oil plays, they're also uh, making it difficult to mine in Alaska as well. So I don't know how they get to the uh, new green deal or the new green economy without minerals, and I don't know how we make a transition without plenty of oil for the next foreseeable future. Let me, uh, I had Mike Summers on, CEO of the American Petroleum Institute, pretty smart fellow. Um, let me just play this sound for you, take a listen. So what is the permitting situation? I was under the impression well, right. that it's very difficult, if not impossible, to get a new permit out of the Interior Department. It is very difficult to get a new permit and almost impossible right now to drill offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. So I assume that is your experience, not just Willow, but elsewhere. There's 42 actions that the, uh, this administration has uh, 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 put against Alaska here since they've come into office. 42 different actions, including uh, actions against our oil, our uh, forestry in the Tongass, as well as minerals. And so this is just an ever-ending fight, Larry, to deal with these guys. And um, their permitting process, not just for oil and gas, but for their own renewables, is, seems to take an eternity. Yes. That's the thing that amazes me. Uh, they can't even get it right for their own stuff. No. 
Because you know what? Trump had, what, whatever one thinks of Trump, I'm not getting involved in presidential politics. I'm saying that factually his policy was a two-year max for a permitting decision. Yes. One federal decision, as we would coordinate, it happened to run through the National Economic Council. I know a lot about this subject. Uh, Francis Brooke and uh, Andrew Ullman and so forth, a lot of smart guys. And they, Biden's undid all this. Yeah. So now you can go on five years, seven years, I don't know how many years, and it wasn't, it won't even, they um, stopped the, per, this is interior, Howland. They stopped it in the Iron Range in Minnesota, yes, next to just, Lake Superior, to ago. which would have been a huge mineral. I mean, if you're going to have batteries, fine, you got to have the minerals to make, what is it, lithium? I don't know this stuff. I'm Nickel, not a cobalt, I forget what it was. But Copper. they can't even get that right. Right. They, um, they, uh, they're not getting the permitting right for anything. They have really, from our perspective, no plan for the future. And they want to offshore as much as possible, which means it's pushed over to places like Africa, South America, China, Asia, where there's no environmental regulations like the United States or Alaska. And it just ends up supporting bad governments and bad policies overseas. Let's help China, because they've been so good to us, you know? They're, they're, they're just friendly competitors. They're not a problem. They're not adversaries. Let's help them out. It's nonsense. It's hard to believe. I go back, I've said this once already, this show. I'll have to call her and tell her I've said it twice. Sarah Sanders, my great pal, difference between normal and crazy. She was right. She was right. The last three years have been nothing but chaos in this country. It's been turned upside down in, in many different ways. And this energy approach that they have is, is definitely chaotic. There's no, there's no uh, rationale to it. Someday we'll fix it. Anyway, Governor Mike Dunleavy of the great state of Alaska, thanks for coming by. Thanks, Appreciate Larry. It.